Ohio State that she works exclusively on real eggshells because of their rich traditional symbolism. Pazewski? Pazanki. Pazanki. That's good. She's going to teach us that correctly. I told you I would put her. That's great. It's an art that celebrates the arrival of spring and the end to harsh winter months. It's optimistic, colorful, and pleasingly symmetrical, just like nature, and what perfect timing, because hopefully spring is here, and I heard there's supposed to be maybe snow flurries this weekend, but you're going to break the spring. That's my job. I, yes. I am responsible for spring every year, <laughs> at least in St. Louis area. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Katherine Alexander. Uh, your group is exceptionally fun. I am really thrilled to be here. I love the energy in the room. I love the color. What you are doing, it was, I, thank you. Bravo and thank you for having me. I'm, I'm so pleased. Um, so there's a lot to this art. If you can read up there, I'm going to talk about the history, the symbolism, how it is done technique-wise, and what Pisanki artists are doing to modernize that technique for this uh, century and millennium. All of these topics really do overlap. Um, I taught high school for many years, so if you can hold your questions to the end. I know you all look like very enthusiastic learners, and that's great. But let me cover everything because it, it kind of comes and goes and it makes more sense at the end. You might be confused for some of it, okay? But hang in there with me. All right, so we are going to start with the historical elements. We will begin in the beginning. Uh, now, first of all, I want you to know that this art is for everyone. Now, while it is a Slavic history and the heritage comes from Ukraine and Poland and Czechoslovakia, which is now uh, Czech Republic and Slovakia, um, Romania, Hungary. While it comes from there, I will say there is no gatekeeping in this art from any of the artists I have ever encountered. We are so happy to have new learners and new participants in this art. So if you are like me and you like to dabble in other things and you think, wow, that was kind of a neat process, I want to try it get together with some friends and try it. The door is open for you, okay? That's the most important thing I can say to a group of artists. Go for it, you have my invitation. Um, send me photos so I can see what you do. Um, okay, so this is a, a map of Ukraine. Uh, usually I start with this presentation and people don't know what it looks like, but today everybody knows what Ukraine looks yeah. like. Um, so uh, traditionally, historically, this. This art is over 3,000 years old. So yes, it does predate Christianity. We can call them Easter eggs if you want to, but please know it predates that religion. Um, so in, in Ukraine, you can see that there were different patterns and designs and colors that would be associated with those different regions. So there's a lot of historic pride in this art. And I love, I love to share that part. I learned from my Polish mother. So uh, we are not Ukrainian, but we're right across the street. Uh, we're neighbors um, in Poland. Originally, the dyes would be handmade uh, from elements that they could find uh, on the farms in Ukraine and Poland 3,000 years ago. So to make a yellow dye, they would boil onion peels. Right? To make an orange dye, they would crush up orange flowers. Red dye, if you think about the area, came from beets. Green was grass and specific sunflower stalks. This is the first lecture that I've done since March 2022. So it's just, it's interesting to see all these references that are more known now. So those sunflower stalks would be made um, to make the green dye. Black dye is a fireplace soot, or they would intentionally burn walnuts. Now, new dyes, you can order online. <laughs> and they, have, they come in every single color, and you can have 17 different shades of red, um, or green, or blue, and it's not that you would necessarily put them together on the same egg, but now we can really kind of pick and choose. I want this 
burnt orange next to this tealish green. So we're, I'm totally spoiled as a Pasanki artist uh, in these days. Okay, so historically, uh, there's a lot of sharing with this art. So uh, they would be made in the spring. So as your, your fine leader pointed out, they celebrate spring, right? And it's very much the ground thaws. It accepts new life, growth begins, the flowers are growing, the crops can be harvested, or not harvested, but they can be sown, right? Thank you. Um, and it was, it was a celebration of that time of year. Also, we can go to the grocery store and get eggs any time of year. But back then, three, 4,000 years ago, the chickens didn't lay eggs all winter. They were conserving their energy. So when they started laying again in the spring, that was a cause for celebration. Um, it, was, it was a cheerful art, and it continues to be that way. Uh, so naturally, sharing was part of this process. And I hope, I hope my energy conveys that as well. Um, <laughs> I don't necessarily like share my work, but I do try to share <laughs> the energy of, its, um, of that spirit. So back in the day, um, two or three every spring would be placed um, out in the cemetery to honor those who were lost over the hard winter. They would kind of brighten their graves this way. Um, they would be given to children to play with like toys. Um, and they would roll them down the hills and whichever egg didn't break won that race. <laughs> um, young women would give them to eligible bachelors as a sign of their um, their creativity and the beautiful things that they could make as a way of um, introducing themselves to suitors. Uh, they would be, uh, they'd be kept in homes as a sign of protection. So these are like pagan times where there's a lot of different beliefs on, on everything, right? Uh, and we'll talk about a lot of the symbolism on each egg as well. They would be put in the barns to ensure uh, a, good, uh, a good birth of livestock for the, for the spring to, to ensure the calving, the calving. Um, they would be put under the beehive because bees wax is part of this process. So they'd be put out in the field. They'd be put in the pastures to protect the sheep. Uh, and then my favorite, they would put the finished eggs and we put back in the hen house to thank the chickens. And I love that. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta thank the source, right? Okay, so that's the history. And now we are going to get into how it is actually made. So I love talking to artists because you kind of you kind of get this craziness. This is a batik wax resist method. Okay? So I'm going to start. These are always with real, raw, whole eggs. Okay, so if I'm talking about chicken eggs, which is what you'll mostly see here, you'll always see those here. Um, these are all chicken eggs. It's whole and real and raw. Um, and then these are the tools. They start on the, on the left side here. This is the most ancient kiska. Everyone say kiska. Yes. While we're at it, say pasanki. Pasanki. That's good. Okay. So the kiska is the tool, okay? And it's just a, it's a funnel, and you're going to hold it over a candle, and you're going to talk to your mom about boys, and what's going on, and on who's herding, who's goats, and everything that's going on in the day, right? <laughs> And you hold it and you do this with your mother and you share a candle, you melt the wax, and then you write on the egg. Pasanki translates to to write. So I write Pasanki, which is why I don't fit in in art fair categories, because it's not painting. <laughs> and it's not works on paper. It's really complicated. Um, so these are kiskas, and their job is to melt that wax so you can write on the egg. So I learned with a very traditional kiska on the left, and now the tool on the right, that's an electric kiska that is plugged in. So
so I don't have to hold it over the candle. I'm just constantly melting and writing wax. I had to get over the fact that I thought it was cheating for a long time, and now I'm like, no, I'm just being smart. <laughs> like, this is just the technology that is available to me. <laughs> so up on top, you can see those are pucks of beeswax. And typically, they have some sort of dark colorant added to them so that they're nice and black so you can write on the egg and see the wax. That really helps. When you hold it over a candle, the soot kind of darkens the wax for you. In an electric kiska, you kind of need that extra help. Here's the process, step by step. White egg, and all I've done are those outlines. Now those are in wax, all right? So the wax is black, but at the end, all the wax is melted off, so those lines will be white. Yeah, okay. Now, on this one, I wanted to get really fancy, so I added some yellow dye and some uh, orange dye so I could have a little bit of a shading ombre effect, right? But then I need to cover that up with wax before I get into the next color. So then I dyed the entire egg green. But you can see that sunflower, traditional Ukrainian symbol, um, that sunflower is all covered up with wax and that protects that piece of the eggshell, that little tiny fraction, from exposure to the dye. You with me so far? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Smart artists. Okay, so then you can keep going from there and typically you're going from lightest to darkest. So from green, I can go into purple. Can you see those like little quarter circles that I colored in purple with wax? And then blue to finish off, that's called a ribbon, the side design. And then finishing in black. Black is a very important color in this art and we'll talk about all the colors. Then you melt the wax off. So you can get a hint of what this will look like, but the reveal is this magical process where the wax melts off and you have a finished, vibrant piece. Cool, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so you can see why I got addicted to this art. Um, so at this point, now all the work is done, now I'm gonna punch a hole in the bottom of the egg and drain it. <laughs> yeah, so once all the technical work is done, now I'm going to drain it and varnish it. And if, uh, I was talking to a few people that have some old school ones in their homes and you can rattle them, they're not drained. Nine times out of 10, you can keep them whole and they'll be just fine. That 10th one will explode when you're on vacation and you come home and it's treacherous. Yes, yeah. Yeah, it's always when you're gone. Uh, so I always drain mine now um, uh, religiously, right? <laughs> so, all right, that's the history and the process. Now, this is my, one of my favorite parts. They're all my favorite parts, I'm not going to lie. The symbolism is really the rich history of this art. So first of all, why eggs, okay? Um, so. Again, we are rejoicing that the hens are laying. So these canvases are now available in a town where you could not go buy paper, right? Certainly not for a luxurious craft like art. Um, then we're celebrating the end of the hardship of winter, and winter was deadly. Um, and then if you think about, if you think about the way the earth looks lifeless in winter. And then life just springs forth with no effort from us. Like you notice how things are just greener now and we just get to appreciate it? It's very much like an egg that looks lifeless and then suddenly life bursts forth. So I love that parallel in this art. It also, it celebrates the, the, the sky, okay? So they would see the yolk as representing the sun and the whites of the eggs representing the moon. And then one of my favorite parts is um, the duality of an egg is that it is, it is fragile enough to break and it is strong enough to give life. And I love that. I love, I, I love it. I got really excited about sharing this art. Um, so that's the first level of symbolism. This is why eggs 
are important to me. This is why I, I stick with eggs. I can't do anything on paper. It's, it's got to be on an egg. Now, the colors are your second layer of symbolism. Okay. Black and white, great colors. White is your classic sign of uh, purity, but also an open future. Black is such a strong color in this art because it is the moment right before dawn breaks. So it's not, it is not this dismal midnight, it is right before things get good. Okay, and it makes, it parallels with spring, right? Things are just about to get okay. <clears throat> so black and white is a great combination. Um, and most, almost all of my art, my lines will start with white and I will almost always end in black for those two symbols. These, by the way, are um, wooden eggs. None of these are my examples. I'll, I'll get to some of my personal work in a minute. But these are uh, wooden eggs, which is kind of a variation on a theme. Yellow symbolizes wisdom, um, and it's representing the wisdom that we gain from the sun. Red is the symbol of passion, but it's not like I fell in love kind of passion. It's the fire you have for life that passion. Like when you get up in the morning, what are you excited about in that day? That's the passion in this color of red. These are a variation. These are, I think, Romanian, where they dye the whole egg a color first, and then they scratch back to white. I don't enjoy that. <laughs> um, it makes me think of the term chicken scratch, right? Like it's just, that's a, that's a literally like a grading way to achieve art that I can't handle. But they're beautiful. <laughs> In my opinion, I'd rather just write it on a white egg and then dye it red, but <laughs> um, Blue is the symbol of health, clear skies, right? And purple is a very non-traditional color. Uh, because they couldn't make purple dye easily. Um, and blue is also a, a pretty non-traditional color. Those just weren't found naturally. Uh, purple is the symbol of not royalty, oh, trust. Trust, which I enjoy. These are very non-traditional eggs. I thought I would pair that with non-traditional color of purple. Green, classic, classic. Growth, spring, renewal, lots of green in Pisanki. We love it. Sometimes I feel like we could share St. Patrick's Day a little bit. <laughs> orange was one of my favorite colors um, because orange is your combination of yellow. If you have yellow wisdom, you have red for passion. Orange, you put wisdom and passion together and you get endurance, right? Like if you're just excited about something and you have the knowledge to do it, it gives you that endurance to do it. And I'm sure you've all felt that in your own art or work in some way, where you just, you're ready for your project, right? Sometimes you don't, and that's okay too. <laughs> I just came out of like a blank spell, where I sat, I like did not touch an egg for a week, and my husband had to poke me, he's like, what is going on? <laughs> okay, so, eggs are symbolic, colors are symbolic, now, what are you going to put on this pisanki? What is a picture? And what does it mean? So nowadays, I do anything that I want. <laughs> but traditionally, we have some classic themes. Birds, birds push away evil. Um, and there's, there's a great story about how Pisanki came to be. Winter arrived in a small Ukrainian village early and severely and the birds didn't have time to migrate. They were unaware of this impending storm and they fell from the trees frozen. And the villagers picked them up and put them in their homes and they kept them safe all winter. And in the spring, the birds ruffled their feathers and flew away. When they came back the next fall, they gifted all of their keepers with the first pasanki ever made. So birds are a great, they're a great storyteller um, for this art. And of course, we couldn't make this art without birds. So we do put lots and lots of birds. I would encourage you, uh, I think the one on the far, far end is a hummingbird. 
So not a traditional symbol, but a Midwest symbol that I love. Um, yeah, I just, I love hummingbirds. The smallest egg I've ever done is a parakeet egg. It's tiny, it's tiny. It broke the internet. I did a parakeet egg and it got 10 million views on TikTok. It was, it was a hoot, yeah. So then wheat, classic, classic symbol. So we talked about clear blue skies and health. The wheat, that's the bottom of your Ukrainian flag. Okay, so the blue is for a clear blue sky. The wheat fields are on the bottom of that flag. So wheat is a symbol that you do not get your reward on the day you plant the seeds. You are waiting, right? So it's one of those classic, this is your life's work. You're going to plant in May and eat in September. Flowers, they're just optimistic little rays of sunshine in spring, so they're, they're great. Also, we love them because they're symmetrical. Almost always in Pasanki, you'll see, you'll see symmetry. Stars. This is a great beginner design um, because it starts with some nice, even, clear divisions to get you going. Uh, not so easy on a three-dimensional oval. So if you can get your, your grid lines, it helps. This would be a good way to start. Um, stars are, they were then, and they still are a symbol of reaching for success, aiming for the stars. Geometric designs are a symbol of the circle of life and how things all come together. This piece has what we call the ribbon, and I get very excited about ribbons. In fact, this one, uh, this display, it's just about two perfect ribbons and then their, their combination. So the ribbon is an unending pattern that just goes around the border of an egg uh, and it just, it represents a long, detailed, rich life. I love ribbons. Grapes. Um, so when this became a, a, a Christian symbol, it became a, a, a symbol for Holy Communion. Um, for me, it's just Chardonnay or Malbec or like, <laughs> I don't, I don't get too religious with my, with my wine. I just drink it. <laughs> um, fish again. So it has the Christian symbol of the fisher of men, uh, but fish historically, that's a symbol of, um, just spiritual freedom that meandering spirit fish can go anywhere, right? Nobody bothers them. So I do like to put fish on eggs, which is weird, like a fish on an egg, but they're great. Circles are a symbol for protection. So these are a great one to keep in the home. Um, architecturally, I know this from marrying an architect, circles are a really strong form. Um, so they can, they can keep you safe. So circles on an egg. He's like, more circles. <laughs> he, my husband is really happy when I go do this lecture because he's like, tell other people. <laughs> go, go tell other people about eggs. <laughs> I got a lecture. Great. <laughs> um, deer is a symbol of prosperity. So a very classic design would be two deer beside one tree. And it's a little hard to see there. This is a very classic design. When we get back to my main screen, I'll show you my modern whimsical take on deer. I love, I love putting deer on Pasanki uh, because there's deer in my backyard all the time. So it feels natural to me to celebrate them. Okay, history, symbolism, how they're made, modernization. <coughs> this is a cool, this is a cool chapter, okay? So we have this ancient art. How are we going to bring it to, to modern day relevancy, okay? And this is my personal goal very, very much so. I love this art. I want to see it in art galleries. I want to see it in art fairs. Um, because I value and appreciate the work that it takes to make one, and I feel like they can stand on their own next to paintings and photography and all the other beautiful artwork that is out there. Let's get Pisanki there too, okay? So that was, is, was my goal. It's one of the things that I am most passionate about. And I will never be finished with that. Um, <laughs> so there are a lot of different newer interpretations on how to do this art. One is carving. 
This is a level of patience I don't have. <laughs> so these are not mine, um, but they are done with the modern tool that is the dentist drill. <laughs> but that's a great guess. Um, and the, you know what? There's probably there's probably a a, a, a bit right that works works with the drill. So yeah, um, but dentist drills typically. How they do that. Etching is a very cool technique. So this is a brown chicken egg with wax lines and instead of going into dyes you go into acid. I do this one a lot, right? So you, you do your lines, you go into acid and it eats away at the shell instead of adding color. If you go too far you're in trouble, right? So you got to time it, you got to be accurate. And then you draw more wax lines and you do more acid and then you get down to this this embossed, just slightly variations in the shell to get those layers. Really cool stuff. I really love it. This is one of mine. This one went to a show in California, so it's a goose egg, a little bit bigger, about that big, and it was just a white, white on white etched egg, and I loved it. It was, it's really pretty. Can you see it on the screen? Can you see those lines? Mm -hmm. I have three ostrich eggs in the Lambert Terminal 1 that are etched. So if you go into the ticketing agency right now at Lambert International until June 9th, there's a Pasanke display. So go see those. There's some really great examples of etching. Speaking of ostrich eggs, they didn't have ostriches in Poland 3,000 years ago. So this is something that my ancestors could not play with. Um, but thanks to how small the world is now, I can get my hands on an ostrich egg. I got my first ostrich egg doing a lecture like this where I said, boy, I wish I had an ostrich egg. And a lady stood up and ran to her office, this is in a church basement, and came back with an ostrich egg. And I said, I guess I have to make an ostrich egg now. She had one for forever. And uh, actually that is this one right here. Um, so that was the first ostrich egg I ever did. Uh, they are this big. You can throw them and they won't break. Wow. Ask me how I know that. <laughs> <laughs> they are a ton of fun. Um, for me, the hard thing is you have, to, you have to hover. They're so big, you have to hover your hand over it, where with a chicken egg, I, I rest my hand so it's steady. So it takes me about a week and a half to do an ostrich egg and then I don't do anything for another week, art-wise. <laughs> or I'll, I'll do a paint by numbers sometimes. Those are really, those are really fun. Okay, stained glass technique. Now, instead of starting with a white egg, this artist dyed the egg black first, then did the outlines, then etched it to white, and then started the whole process of colors. Cool stuff, right? Yeah, so neat. No? <laughs> You're saying no, no, too much, too much. Um, so, excuse me, the stained glass effect is really neat. This one is mine. This is an emu egg. Emus lay black eggs. They are the coolest birds. Um, <laughs> but they're really angry, so um, <laughs> don't ask an emu for an egg. Um, <laughs> so, this is. <laughs> um, so, the black lines that you can see there, that's the natural shell color. This one is also, it's a free art display at uh, Lambert International, <laughs> Terminal 1. Um, so, if you're flying anything but Southwest, that one is there too. It's before security too. There, I have 13 eggs there. I did one set that um, it's the violets are the flower of Illinois um, and then oh, I think it's dogwoods are the flower of Missouri. So I put those together at uh, Lambert. Made me happy to see them together. Okay and so uh, this was my first goose egg that I got into Art St. Louis um, and it's just the concept that we are taking this folk art and elevating it to high art status. So you can see classic ideas, sunflowers, fish, flowers. I got into um, red poppies. You can see those at the top while I'm on the bottom. 
for a long time. My father's a veteran, so on Veterans Day, I was working with red poppies, and then they just showed up on every egg <laughs> after that for like a year. You ever do that? You get something and it just continues? Okay, mosaics. This is, um, this is something that very few artists are doing um, with Pisanki, but I, I love to do it. So I wrote three chicken eggs. I wrote them as perfectly as I could, just like that display there, a blue one, a yellow orange one, and then one that had both colors. And then I had a glass of wine and I <laughs> broke them all. Oh my God. <laughs> and, then, and then I started gluing them on a canvas. Now this is me trying desperately to get into art fairs because I really, I, like I said, I want this seen by artists and the public and buyers. Um, <laughs> um, and, I'm, and I'm trying to think, I don't want shells and shells of eggs on a Saturday outside in Belleville, out on the square. Like that's not, that's not how I want to present this art. I will be a nervous wreck. So how do I get them from the shelf onto the wall? So this was my first idea. This is my second idea where I cut them in half and frame them. It's a little less violent, but it's also less fun. Um, <laughs> so the mosaic idea is great. This is one of my favorite pieces now. I'll never ever sell it because now I see it as, as the flag of Ukraine, but sideways. And actually, this is in my, um, in my office. And it was displayed this way for three years. And then in March, I flipped it. So the blue's on top. I love it. These are eggshells that I wrote as best as I could. I'm sorry you can't see the details. And then I smashed them, and then I framed them, and they are birds in flight. I love this series. I love this collection so much. They are um, 16 by 11 inches, um, and they are, it's my Hatch to Fly series. I have eight of them. You can see them. Uh, these will be on display at the Webster Arts Fair, if you want to come on over to Missouri, um, in June, first weekend of June, Webster Arts Fair, I will be there. Um, the Hatch to Fly series is one of my favorite things. You'll notice a hummingbird again. So some non-traditional birds, <laughs> peacock. Um, and then of course I had to do a cardinal. So that cardinal um, is actually now in Ukraine. I was, for three years, I was going to be in the Pisanka Museum of Ukraine in Kolomia um, as an artist. And then um, in, it was gonna be spring of 2020. So no, <laughs> and then they pushed it back to spring of 2021, but they weren't ready. They're like, 2022, it'll be our year. <laughs> so um, I've been assured, so my, my work is actually out, like they wrapped up my work and it's out of the museum. And I was like, you guys, my work is the least of your worries. Like, it, we're, I'm okay, you okay. Um, but I, I was sure to send them a cardinal because I wanted to represent Okay, these are this big. These are my parakeet eggs. Oh my goodness. So I, I have one set that the, they're earrings. Now, they're incredibly fragile. Um, the Kiska tip, if you, just, if you look at it too wrong, it'll just go right through the shell. Um, so when I'm done with the art, uh, and I should preface this, that they, um, they come to me drained. They come from a hatchery. She takes great care of her parakeets. Um, she sends me the drained, never, never fertilized eggs. I never work on a fertilized egg. I'm not hurting the bird population, I swear. Um, but they're already drained and they come to me and then when I'm done, I fill them and coat them with resin. So they're very strong, it's like a bead. So I'll wear these and people will think it's just a bead. I'm like, it's a parakeet egg. <laughs> and then, that's a good reaction, it's fun. Um, so that's, a, that's very much a modern technique to use resin to strengthen the eggshells. I think, oh okay, last, last part, last part. <laughs> so these are just some of my favorite and most current works, okay? And now that you understand the history and how they're made and the symbolism and the colors and the motifs, you'll kind of be able to pick up on some of those themes. So we have florals and a ribbon. 
Now I did this, this was a goose egg. I did this specifically to smash. I wanted the smallest, tiniest details possible because I was going to smash it into necklaces. So I make these necklaces now. Um, this kept me, this, this helped my art survive through COVID. I was selling necklaces on Etsy and I still do. Um, I have plenty here that you can see in real life. So I smashed this egg into necklaces and then these are covered and sealed with resin as well. So they're really easy to fly across the country and globally really um, to help keep me in business uh, when all the art fairs and, and things close down. So you can see if you get those details tiny enough that even when you smash it, it's still beautiful and it's still detailed. I love these. This, these are pears on a partridge egg. Yes. <laughs> I had to, I had to do it. Uh, <laughs> so um, <clears throat> this is another one that I ended up smashing and turning into necklaces uh, so that I could buy Christmas gifts that year and it worked. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so those are pears on an actual partridge egg. Thank goodness for that hatchery, I can get all kinds of, of fun eggs. And then I played, you know, Christmas music when I did the videos on TikTok and all that good stuff. Oh, wow. Can you see it? Monarch, monarch wings. Um, so that one was a little tricky because I did the white, then the black, then I had to wash it off to do the orange. But there's, that's the only order that this would work. And so those white dots were kind of floating on their own, and then I had to color in that black background with wax. I'm told I think in, res in, in reverse, but I don't know because this is the only art I've ever done. I think you all think in reverse. <laughs> so here are um, fish. So that symbol of meandering freedom, um, and then a ribbon to hold it all together. This is one of my favorites. Classic idea, very modern <clears throat> Catherine Alexander take. And then this is a brown chicken egg. I wanted to include one of those. <coughs> Classic symbol of wheat was represented. Um, so it's a brown egg. Those lines are all um, just kind of a light brown. Then I etched it down to the lighter shade of brown and added colors to it. This is one of my favorites. I'll never sell it. I'll never cut it in half either. <laughs> ah, so then this is, um, I, I just wanted as much color as possible. Um, and I started getting really experimental with designs. So we don't have symmetry here. There, it's, everything's on the bias. It's organic. It's just kind of growing and moving and changing colors and shifting. But it's kind of connected, but it's kind of not. This is one of my favorite pieces. I think... That's everything. So, thank you. Um, I would be more than happy to answer questions, um, but I want to honor your time. I, I won't keep you too long. Um, I'm also happy to let you see these. Um, if they all come home with me, uh, they will be in the Webster Arts Fair. One of these days, I will, I will make it. I will make it in to Art on the Square. I will do it. I will keep throwing money at that application until I make it in. Uh, if you have any advice, I am here for it. Um, but one of the great things about that art fair is that they have a craft, the craft category. Fine craft, thank you, thank you. The fine craft category, which I got so excited about. Um, and I get it, like rejection is part of the thing. So I was happy to get rejected, but I'm gonna keep applying. <laughs> so look for me there. Um, I will make it there. Uh, in the meantime, I will be in Webster. And what are your questions? <laughs> yes. Do you draw out before, and when you're putting it on the egg, do you have a magnifying glass? <laughs> oh, okay, so I just started using craft optics. Craft optics are glasses that you wear, and they have a light and magnifiers, and the glasses themselves have um, the prescription. So you, they can call your optometrist and get your prescription, and they put them in the glasses, and then there's the magnifiers you can flip up and down. Whatever your art is, try them out. 
Tell them Catherine Alexander sent you, though. <laughs> really, do that. And then Jeff will be like, ah, okay, okay, gotcha. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm on, on the end with them. Um, they're wonderful. So I'm, I'm using those now, especially on those parakeet eggs. Um, sketching. No, because I, I don't operate with pencil. I don't, I don't. I don't know how to do that. So, and also, like, if it's flat, it's no good to me for practice. So, sketching, yes, I consider my chicken eggs a sketch. If it's great, then I'll try it on a goose egg. If it's really great, then I'll invest in an ostrich egg. Um, or I'll go down. I do quail eggs. So, all, anything from a chicken egg is more expensive, right? Bigger or smaller. So, I'll often sketch on a chicken egg in wax the whole process, look at it, and then say, like, I need to fix this before I try a quail egg. Good question. Any other questions? I did pretty good. All right. Yes. As, as a, a young kid, we used to uh, blow the egg. We'd put a hole in the top of the bottom and blow the egg out. And yes. Do you seal those holes back up when you do that? No. Nope. I think it's best. Uh, what, I, what I do is when I empty it, and it's only one hole on the bottom, so I do the one hole, and then I'll stick like a toothpick in there and break up the yolk. And then I have this tool, and it's like a hook. And it goes all the way up to the top of the egg. And then I blow into the hook, and the air pressure oh. drains the egg down out the same hole. Then I'll fill the hole with water, and I'll shake it around. And then I do that a couple of times. So then the inside has not only been emptied, but then like cleaned out with water. Um, and there's only one hole. Good question. Yeah. Most importantly, do you mourn when eggs are on the menu? <laughs> I had eggs for lunch today. They're delicious. I love them. <laughs> um, sometimes, I sometimes people get upset that I that I waste the food. <laughs> Sorry, I do. Yes. Well, for that, you just put it in a scrambled egg. Yeah. yeah. Um, you were talking about how you put the, the resin in the tiny ones. Yes. Do you do that in your larger ones as well, and perhaps in the ones you're cutting, so that they'll be less likely to just crumble? So here's the problem is, if I resin it and then cut it, the resin kind of splinters. Oh. Now, um, I don't usually put resin, like, the smaller, these are my solos. I'm really a musician in real life. Um, so I call these a solo, and these are a trio. Um, <laughs> the solos here, they have UV protective varnish, but no resin. The trio I was experimenting with, and after I cut it, I put resin on top because I wanted it really thick. Mm -hmm. So you can see the difference here. Um, but I've since then just gone back to the, a thin layer of varnish. And then, yeah, and then the jewelry has. Even the whole one. I don't. I don't. Really fragile. They're, well, yes. And that's why I got into framing them. Yeah. Yes. How do you hold them real so steady? How do I hold them steady? Coffee is bad. <laughs> um, but wine is good. Um, so. I don't have an answer for that. That's satisfying. Do they sit on or something? No, I just I just hold it and I put my my hand on the table. Um, also, so if you want to grab my card, you can see me make these. The whole process I put on TikTok videos. You don't need a TikTok account. You can just go to www.tiktok and then search Catherine Alexander Art. You don't need to set up an account. So go to your computer, go to TikTok, look for Catherine Alexander Art, and then you can watch more of a sunky videos than you've ever really wanted <laughs> so much. Yeah, yes? Do you raise your own poultry? I can't. I'm not allowed. So I live in Baldwin, Missouri, and they actually have an ordinance against chickens. And it's probably better that way because I have little boys, and they're like enough. <laughs> so if I also had chickens, I would just never get around to art. But I do love like uh, local blue eggs. Those are super cool. Really fun to play with. Yes. What type of art resin do you use? Oh, it's. Is it called? Eco, art resin? It's called Ecopoxy Eco UV resin. It's a two part. It's expensive. It's not fun, but it's also non toxic. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. Ecopoxy UV. Yes. What's the name of the tool again that you use? Kiska. Kiska. Okay. And the wax goes into that? Yes. So it goes, yeah. Do you break a piece off and put it in the top and it melts out? It's so, it's so hot that I just kind of like melt it in there. Okay. And you can see that it, it's, yeah. It'll show it on there. Yep. Okay. Great questions, yes. There's another one no one has asked you yet. What kind of dye do you use? Okay, so I, I don't know the word for it, but it's, I work with a company called Pisanki, uh, no, Ukrainian Egg Accessories. <laughs> Ukrainian Egg Accessories. It's a friend of mine, she owns a, a dye supply company in Canada. There are also some US providers, Pisanki USA, is another great one. So they come in packets, they are cheap. You could get three colors for like $4, and a Kiska for $3, and a chunk of beeswax. It has to be the real good, like from a supplier shop, Pasanki shop, beeswax. You could try this art this spring and just have fun with it for under $10 and some postage. But I would really encourage you, if you wanna play around with these, they're fun. Um, I would really encourage you to, to order from Pasanki USA or Ukrainian Accessories and not Amazon if you don't have to. I'm trying to keep the art alive. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. So the Kiska, is, it's a tube, you said. So the wax is in the tube. Yes. And, up, and then it's like a needle? So it's a funnel, basically, and it's the capillary action works that it's, it's viscous enough that it'll stay in there until it touches the, the surface of the egg and then it just kind of pulls itself out, right? Um, so if you put it on a, on a paper towel, it would just kind of drain out. Um, the eggshell surface is just enough, it'll write a nice line for you. It takes some practice, because it can't be too hot, it'll just melt or catch on fire. <laughs> um, and if it's just perfect, you'll get a, a nice line. Yes? Uh, so, um, do you ever make a mistake? All the time. <laughs> and you can't erase it. You can't you go can, back. You can't erase it. You can't erase it. You can't scrape it off. Like once the wax touches the eggshell, it's there. It's going to be there. So you have some options. You can incorporate that into your design. And now you need to add that in <laughs> symmetrical <laughs> values. Um, or you can say, this was such a fatal error that I'm going to throw this at a tree. <laughs> Those are your options. <laughs> yes. How do you burn the wax off at the end? Oh, okay. So I use a heat gun now. So it's just hot air and the. Yeah, I think that's why TikTok likes me is for these reveal videos because you can just watch the wax melt and it's so satisfying. Um, but you can also just put it in the oven, right? If you're starting out, empty the egg, um, put it in the oven, and then it'll just kind of melt off 250, no higher, because you don't want like cooked eggs. Um, or, traditionally, you hold it up to a candle and then melt the wax, wipe it off, melt the wax, wipe it off, talk to your mom. Like that. You guys are really fun, yes. Is the funnel, is yes. there only one size funnel or multiple sizes? Uh, artist question. Uh, there are different gauges. So parakeet eggs, I use extra, extra fine, and then if I'm etching, that the acid will kind of eat away at some of that wax too, so I use a super heavy gauge, knowing that I'm gonna lose some of it to the acid. What kind of acid? Hydrochloric acid, it's bad. It's really bad. Um, so, yeah. As opposed to the good acid. Yeah, <laughs> which is vinegar, right? Yeah. So if I had a lot of patience, you can etch a brown egg in vinegar, but I'm impatient, um, mostly because I have little children running around, so. We got it. We gotta make you have little children and hydrochloric and acid. acid. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, so I say etched eggs is a summer sport because I have to go outside and I'm completely like I'm vented. I have my goggles on. I have the the rubber gloves, um, and then your hands are in you know in that acid and there's hose running. So it's got to be a summer activity. <laughs> my neighbors love it. There it is. <laughs> I'm a hoot. <laughs> I am happy to answer more questions. I would love for you to see these up close and in person because they are different than on the screen. I thank you so much, so much for having me. 
Um, if you know of any, like if you have another group that you would like me to go do this to, I love, I love talking about it. It makes my husband happy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> entertaining that was fabulous I, and I love your energy that you shared with us so that was amazing thank you